Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 287 of Be With Me, 7 Minutes of Biblical Wonder. And today's title is going to be Swallowed by Sexual Stupidity or Devoured by Sexual Stupidity, Stupidity, Maybe Moving Towards Sorry for Being Sexually Stupid. And before we throw just this guy under the bus in our story today, uh, I would ask the question, who of us has not been sexually stupid? Uh, maybe we could ask the question, who's not been sexually stupid one time? Or who's not been sexually stupid for a season? Or I would even ask, who's not been sexually stupid today, even? And uh, in, under that category, we would include stinking thinking and st- stinking images and stinking seeing and stinking doing. So we should approach this story humbly, and here's the story We've been through the lost sheep, then the lost coin, and now we're going to study the lost son, and we're going to find out which of the two sons is the lost son. That's probably a couple days from now. But in the meantime, we've got to go through sexual stupidity because this story absolutely reeks sexual stupidity. We'll talk about that today. So this is going to be fun. This is from Luke chapter 15 and verse 11, the parable of the prodigal son. I will read seven verses for you today, and that will be enough. That's about a third of the story. And he said, there was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided this property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property, and here's the sex part, in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate. And no one gave him anything. Verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? but I perish here with hunger. So a couple things about this guy. Uh, He's the one that's actually known as the prodigal son. We're going to talk about the other son eventually. Um, He's younger and he squanders uh, this property in reckless living. Okay, Uh, verse 30, which we're not going to get to, the other son in his complaint about the prodigal son says, When this son of yours came who has devoured your property with prostitutes. So we get a little bit of detail, a little fill in the blank here of how did this guy go from having an inheritance to having absolutely nothing. He spent everything. Well, it was via prostitutes. It devoured your prostitutes. So we find out what what he did and with whom prostitutes and what he did. He devoured your inheritance from the father, and to what extent, all the way. The Greek word is it. he ate it up ravenously. It was consumed. It was swallowed completely. That's what happened to this inheritance. And, and again, sex. The word reckless in verse 13, had to look that up too just because it's so cool. He gathered all he had, took a journey into a far country, and there squandered his property in reckless living. It, not only was it wasteful and senseless, but it, it's past that. It's like madness, like a desperate case of this. Like this guy was so set on this that he was past recovery. And then that's exactly what happened. Okay, so he gets, he devours this property one naked prostitute at a time. Uh, wealth reduction by seduction. 
Uh, we're going to throw this guy on the bus, but he's he's going to redeem. That's the greatest thing. He's not fast recovery, even though that's the way he's described. So what he says to his father is, I can't wait for you to die. In fact, you're dead to me now, so just give me what I'm going to get uh, in inheritance. So the father presumably had to sell property or sell sheep or sell cattle or divide up his estate and turn it into portable cash for this guy. Uh, and the presumptuousness of just, hey, give me this. Uh, when you're dead, I'll probably get something, so I want it now. And you know that he plans to go away because uh, as soon as he gets the inheritance, um, he's gone in a couple of days. So we know that he plans this journey. Uh, so he goes away and it's going to be far away and involving travel and fun and girls and sexual satisfaction. Uh, so the Lord, let's remember, has made a vehicle for sexual satisfaction and intimacy and joy and uh, s- spiritual uh, imaging of his marriage with the church, uh, of security and reproduction. That's called marriage, ladies and gentlemen. So he has a mechanism but the, the thing that this guy does is say, I think I got a better way. And let's go to a foreign country. I think I have a better way than God. Uh, I have a better way than my family. Let's go to a foreign country. Let's get some exotic women like Solomon did. Uh, yeah, they might be involved in human trafficking. Who cares? Might be full of disease. Who cares? Might be uh, ultimately dissatisfied. I might get deposits inside my memory that I'm going to regret for the rest of my life and serve to discourage me. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to deal with that. The point here is that everybody, including this guy, is in charge of their own zipper, zipper. And this guy gets devoured by sexual sin. He was ravenously consumed by it. His brother recognized it. Uh, to the point that it destroyed his relationship with his brother. It destroyed the brother's relationship with the father. Uh, It almost destroys the relationship with his own father. Uh, So he has this zipper management problem or a sexual purity problem physically or mentally that goes all the way to the end where he spends everything. So the prodigal son, what's the problem? Sexual stupidity. Uh, and we'll absolutely throw him under the bus here today. But stay with me. Come back tomorrow because he does some amazing things in being restored, just like you can.